To scale an image is to reduce its overall size in pixels while retaining its aspect ratio. No parts of the image are removed, you are simply making the entire image smaller in size. And by scaling the image, you're also reducing its file size, which will in turn speed up the load time for your site. This is the best practice, and it can create a better user experience as well as improved search results. So in scaling an image, you choose to reduce either the width or the height. WordPress will automatically calculate the other value. For example, if your image is 1600 pixels by 800 pixels, and you change the width to 800, the height will automatically adjust to 400 pixels. Essentially, both numbers are reduced by the same percentage amount, in this case, 50%. Images can only be scaled down, not up. And for best results, you should always scale your image before you crop, rotate, or flip it. After you've selected an image and click the Edit Image button, locate the Scale Image section. Underneath New Dimensions, enter either a new width or a new height. In this example, I want the width of the image to be 800 pixels because the main content area of my site only ever reaches a maximum of 800 pixels wide, so my image will never need to be displayed any wider than that. So I enter 800 here for the width. You'll notice the height automatically changes to the appropriate value in order to keep the same proportions. This happens so that the image won't get distorted. Once you click the Scale button, your new dimensions are immediately applied. And that's all there is to scaling an image in WordPress. There are a few different ways to crop an image in WordPress. You can select any part of the image freehand with your cursor. You can crop by aspect ratio. For example, one by one would be a square. 16 by nine is another popular aspect ratio for large desktop monitors and TV screens. Or you can specify exact pixel dimensions. Let's dive in and take a look at each option. To draw a freehand crop, hover your cursor anywhere over top of your image. Click, hold, and drag your cursor to draw a rectangle on the image. Once you release your mouse, you can use the squares located around the edges of your selection to adjust the crop. Place your cursor in the middle of the image, click and drag to move your selection to another part of the image. Once you're happy with your selection, click the Crop button. And to save your changes, be sure to click Save down below. Now let's say you know the exact dimensions that you need the image to be. For this example, we need our image to be exactly 600 pixels wide and 700 pixels tall. First, draw an area over top of the image. It doesn't matter how big or small, just any area on the image will do. Now, we'll come over here to the Image Crop section. And underneath Selection, we'll enter 600, followed by 700. Notice how the selection on the image has changed. It is now exactly 600 pixels wide by 700 tall. You can move it around to crop a different part of the image, and when you've got what you want, just click Crop. The third option for cropping an image is by specifying an aspect ratio. Like I mentioned at the top of this video, a one by one aspect ratio would produce a square. But you can choose any aspect ratio that you'd like. It's completely up to you, and it will depend on your theme as well as personal preference. To achieve a perfect square, under aspect ratio, enter one by one. Now, when you go to draw your selection over the image, you'll notice that you can only draw a square. You can make your square larger or smaller, but it'll always be a square. Another common usage of the aspect ratio crop might be if you need a wide but short header image. Set your aspect ratio to something like 10 by three and then make your selection. This would make for a great background image that you could display text on top of. And again, always remember to click save after you're finished cropping. Rotating an image is helpful if the image was accidentally taken in the wrong orientation. We often see this with smartphone cameras, when you turn your phone sideways to take a picture in landscape mode, but it comes out in portrait mode instead. Or maybe you just want to turn an image onto its side. When rotating images, you have two options. You can rotate them counterclockwise, or to the left, and clockwise, to the right. As you'll see here, Instead of the hand holding the phone from the bottom of the screen, it now looks like he's holding it from the side. 
Each time you click a rotate button, the image will rotate 90 degrees in that direction. Flipping an image is helpful if you have an object on one side of the frame and you want to move it to the other. It's also great for people and faces that you want looking in the opposite direction. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an image of a man looking off to the left. Imagine you have a landing page on your site and you want this man looking directly towards a call to action button you have placed on the page. The only problem is the call to action is on the right side. His eyes are looking in the wrong direction. Use these buttons to flip the image. The first button flips the image vertically, which isn't very helpful in this case. Now he's upside down and that just looks silly. We can use these buttons to undo or redo our changes. Let's click undo and try again. This time we'll use the flip horizontally button. Nice. Now he's looking off to the right in the direction of our call to action. And the image still looks natural as if you never made any changes at all. As always, remember to click save when you're finished editing. Like you saw in the previous video, you can always use the undo button to go back a step. But this only works before you save the image. What happens if you've already saved your changes, but want to revert back to the original image that you initially uploaded? Well, that's where Restore comes in. The Restore Original Image section only appears once you've edited an image. Over here on the right, you'll see this new option. Click on the arrow to show the Restore button. As you'll see here, previously edited copies of the image will still work if you've already placed them on your site somewhere. But once you revert back to the original, the next time that you insert this image, the original version is what will be used. You can also use the Restore option if you'd like to start over and make completely different edits to your image. Simply click the Restore Image button and your original image is back. Thumbnail images refer to a specific size and crop of your image. For every image you upload, WordPress automatically creates the thumbnail size for you along with several other sizes, small, medium, and large. By default, the thumbnail is a square and it will feature the centermost part of your image. It's important to point out that different WordPress themes use thumbnails in different ways. In this lesson, I'll explain the different options you have when it comes to editing your image's thumbnail. When editing an image, you have a section over here for thumbnail settings. You'll see a preview of the current thumbnail size, followed by three options. With all the image edits you make, you can apply them to all image sizes, which applies the edits to all images, including the thumbnail image, just the thumbnail, which leaves all of your larger image sizes untouched, or all sizes except the thumbnail, which does exactly what you'd expect. The most common use here is to crop your image and only apply it to the thumbnail. For example, let's say the main focal point of your image is somewhat small compared to the image as a whole or it might be off to the side, like the hot air balloon in this example. And we want the image thumbnail to zoom in on and center the balloon. Choose the second option here for thumbnail only. Now, to create a perfect square, I'll use the aspect ratio trick I went over in a previous lesson and set it to one by one. And then I'll crop the image to show a close up of the hot air balloon. Now, when you click save, your thumbnail image will show the hot air balloon in more detail, but when you insert any other image size into a page or post, you'll see the entire image, including the water and reflection. If your theme uses thumbnail image sizes on blog post archive pages, this feature can be especially helpful. Let's say you have an image that you've used in multiple places on your site, but now you've updated it. There's a newer version you want to use. It would be a pain to go through all of your previous posts, locate each instance of the image, and replace it with the new one that you just uploaded. With WordPress, by default, that's what you'd have to do. But I'm about to show you a plugin that can make your life a lot easier. In this example, I'll be using our company logo. You see the file name listed here. This is what's used to insert this image into a bunch of our pages. Now, we want to use a different version of our logo, but not have to update the file name. We'll do this using the Enable Media Replace plugin. Navigate to Plugins, Add New. Search for Enable Media Replace. It should be the first result. 
We're going to click install now and then click activate. Now let's return to our media library and open up the image that we want to replace. You'll see a new option has been added called replace media. First, let's click the upload a new file button. Now I'm going to click choose file and select my new logo file. We'll leave the first option selected to just replace that file. And finally, click the upload button. You'll see a message that confirms your image has been updated and your new image should appear on screen. This works with all file types, not just images. For example, you could use it to update a PDF or popular zip file that you provide as a download.